Have you recently been diagnosed with having kidney stones? Although your doctor may have provided you with several treatment options, you still might have a few questions. Like what are kidney stones made out of? How do they form? And how can I prevent from having them in the future? First off, it's important to know that you are not alone. Kidney stones are quite common with 1 out of 10 Canadians experiencing them at some point throughout their lives. Now let's dive into how kidney stones are formed. As the name implies, the stones form in the kidney. The kidney is an organ that is mainly responsible for cleaning out the blood and making urine, which removes waste products. Now, kidney stones form when certain substances stick together and accumulate, eventually forming a crystal or stone. Although there are many minerals and substances that can accumulate, the most common cause of kidney stones is from excess calcium accumulation. Calcium is a mineral that we obtain from a daily diet through products such as milk, or leafy green vegetables. As our kidney is removing excess calcium from our blood into the urine, sometimes there's too much calcium in our blood for our kidney to remove. Calcium can then combine with other substances and then begin to build up, stick together and accumulate in our urine. Over time, the accumulation will be large enough to form a stone. And voila, here's our kidney stone. More specifically, kidney stone formation is commonly described through a three-step process. This three-step process covers crystallization, aggregation, and crystal growth. Let's start with crystallization. This just refers to minerals and substances in our body that have the ability to naturally turn into crystals in our urine or blood. That means that kidney stones can only begin to form with substances that have the ability to crystallize, such as the ones mentioned before, including calcium. Now, during the aggregation step, many other substances can attach to these crystallized minerals and begin to aggregate, such as shown here. Finally, during the crystal growth step, the crystal can grow over time in our urine and eventually become larger and larger. Some stones are small enough to pass through with urine, so we don't even notice them. However, others can get too large to pass through, causing us severe pain. Other factors such as medications and infections may also contribute to kidney stone formation. So we've discussed how kidney stones are formed. We talked about what they are made out of. So now, how can we prevent them from having them in the future? If you've already had kidney stones, you're at higher risk of getting them again if your lifestyle does not change. Here are some ways you can reduce the risk. First off, stay hydrated and drink lots of water throughout the day. Water prevents the stones from becoming concentrated and building up in the urine. Second, eat a healthy amount of calcium and sodium. Although sodium and calcium are important parts of our diet, it's important to not excessively consume these minerals since sodium can promote calcium stones. Third, avoid excessive meat consumption. High meat diets have been linked to kidney stone formation, so it's important to avoid excessive meat consumption. If you want to learn more about kidney stones, Talk to your healthcare provider and check out the Kidney Foundation of Canada at www.kidney.ca slash kidneystones.